Hello, I'm Roger Dove, and I'd like to talk to you about oud. Oud is one of those ingredients that so much is said about, and yet so few people know really much about it. It's a very unusual story. The Aguilaria tree ends up becoming infected with the fungus, and that infection causes a change in the heartwood of the tree. When the tree is felled, nobody knows exactly how much oud wood will be inside the tree. And in the end, very, very fine, almost like pins or sewing needles are used so that you end up with a piece of wood like this. These vary enormously in size and shape, but the one thing I hope you can see is that there are holes in the wood where the healthy tissue has been because that needs to be removed to ensure that what we have is going to process perfectly. If you leave any healthy tissue, the entire distillation will be spoiled. With processing oud, one of the most ancient of all techniques is still used, where the oud is literally boiled. It has to be done very, very slowly, otherwise you get an oxidation of the oil, which would spoil it. As the oil comes onto the surface of the water, the palm of the hand traditionally is dipped into the container to pick the oil up, which is then scraped on the side of a vessel, and the oil is collected that way. I had the great fortune of working in the Middle East for three years. To my knowledge, I'm the only Western perfumer who ever has. When I was there, I started to discover the great mystery, which is oud. I learned that people in the Middle East don't just put a bit of oud on and that's it done. It's so entrenched in the culture and there are many rituals around it. It traditionally comes in a small bottle about this large, which is called a toller. Many ouds can literally cost tens of thousands of pounds for 12 mil. Some of them are very rare. And one of the very unusual aspects of oud is that oud continues to mature, where most oils will end up going off, they'll oxidize. If oud is stored properly, the oud will get more and more mellow with age. So how is oud used in the Middle East? A little drop of oud on the wrist from a toller, and then the side of the hand here is used to spread the oud along the wrist, then clothes are put over the top, and the same movement, the same gesture, so that the oud comes through and impregnates the fabric itself. But the garment the person's wearing will have also been scented using something called bachur. Bachur is where you take a little tiny piece of maybe oud wood, put it on charcoal which is burning, and the smoke then goes through the clothes until the clothes are scented. This ritual is normally performed in a house every single day through the entire wardrobe. The incenses are also used very often when someone's dressed and you can step over the charcoal burner and when the smoke comes out from your neck, from the collar and also your wrist, you're done, if you like, you're perfumed. The other thing that I've always found fantastic and fascinating is the use of something called machalat. Machalat are special blends of perfume, which every household will have, and it really is this great secret that surrounds Middle Eastern perfumery that I became fascinated with in the three years that I spent there. I think the thing that's interesting with Oud, the West became exposed to it for the first time as Dubai sprung up. I always say, in my opinion, Dubai is a little bit like Manhattan must have been in the 1920s. This place suddenly growing from nowhere that the whole world looked at as a place to go and make their fame fortune and to change their lives. And Dubai certainly has done that. And so we become exposed to a scent, which was a secret. And we become fascinated by it. It's my Oud creations, the idea was very simple. The first one, was part of the launch of Roger Parfum back in 2011, simply called Oud, and I couldn't have believed that it would be the success that it was. It is a perfume built around a blend of Ouds. It has saffron and rose, and so really as a homage to the scent of the Gulf. It really has the effect as if you have used Bachur, and the Bachur has become soft and mellow with the oud itself around. The greatest compliment I've ever received with it is when I meet uh, customers from the Middle East, if I happen to be in a store like Harrods, and they say, how do you know our smell? And I always say the same, because I lived amongst you for three years and got very, very close. When we launched the scent, I was told that if we made this amount, it would last us four to six months. 
so we made the amount that Harrods told us to make. We sold out of every single piece in 10 days. And so I think that this scent is one of the ones that really established my brand and made me understand that people from all around the world were fascinated by this exotic raw material. When we launched it, we were certainly right at the very, very forefront of Oud in Western perfumery. And I found it interesting and have found it interesting that so many journalists who interviewed me talking about Oud right at the beginning were saying, oh, it's such a fashion and it will finish, it can't carry on. And I always disagreed. I always said, no, I don't believe that's so. It's very rare new natural raw materials are discovered, maybe if we're lucky, two in a decade. So whilst this material is ancient, to the West it was something new. And so it's established itself as part of the perfumer's canon. I think the use of it has altered, it's now become mainstream. So Oud is here to stay. I love playing with it. I love seeing the different things you can do with it. And so whether it's something like Sweetie Oud, where I put very, very unusual, almost gourmand materials, which are normally used in the food industry, or whether I look at very classic materials like the rose taif in my taif oud, I like seeing how you can push it in different directions. But the heart of all of it are the three ouds that make the classic collection. Oud, amber oud, and musk oud. Arguably, amber is one of the most loved odors around the world. People who like it don't like it. They're fixated on it. So I wanted to make one of the most glorious ambers I possibly could. And so for it, I blended vanilla, benzoin and labdanum, the classic amber base. And I added to it ambergris, which is extraordinary rare and costly, put it with oud. And so maybe one of the most legendary of all my creations was born, amber oud, loved all around the world. Musk oud. Musk has been forbidden for years as a natural raw material. But if I'm known for one thing, it's the enormous volume of naturals that make up all of my creations. And so for this particular composition, I went to one place because there's only one place to go. The only natural musk note we can use, a very rare, very unusual material called ombrette. Ombrette is the seed of a hibiscus, and yet the oil we produce from it has this wonderful musky odor. I wanted to blend it with something soft and slightly leathery, and so for that I use labdanum. And so with this composition, you go to the land of the sheep. With this, I wanted a scent which was warm and dry with no sweetness. And so the ombrette, the labdanum and the oud make up the heart of the composition that is musk oud. My original oud captured the scents that captured my heart when I first visited the Gulf. It is a composition based around oud wood, rose and saffron. But the thing that makes this unlike any other is somewhere in the composition you get the feeling of the bachur and a little touch of mechalat. It is the scent that captured my heart and it seems to have captured many of yours. I hope you love it as much as I loved creating it. One of the innovations I made with the Oud's was a product we call Crystal Parfum. Oud itself, when you make it, is very, very dark. Here is one of the original Oud's, and you can imagine when you wear it, this liquid, if you're wearing pale colors, it would stain it. The Crystal Parfum, when you put it by the side, you can see is a totally different color. So I spoke to my oil suppliers and said I wanted them to use a very, very specific method on the distillation of the oils. It's called molecular fractional distillation. It means that a specific fraction in the distillation process is removed, the molecules responsible for color. When combined, you end up with a product like this, which is almost colorless. So we call it crystal parfum. When you buy the original ouds, the dark ones, you will see inside a little warning label, and we put it in because if you are wearing pale clothes, they are so dark they'll cause staining. If that's of any concern to you at all, Crystal Parfum is the answer. So in the Oud collection, I've created a lot of things which we're now really famous for all around the world. And one of those is a product called Absolute Précieuse. Précieuse is self-explanatory. It says that they are precious. 
and an absolute is a reference to one of the most rare and precious of all types of oil that exists in perfumery, an absolute. It suggests something super concentrated. And that's precisely what the absolute précieuses are. They were inspired by the idea of oud in a toller, the little bottles that traditionally oud is sold in and used in the Middle East. But all around the world, people like the idea of atomizers. The absolute précieuse is the most concentrated form of oud I make, and when you put it on, you really need one small spray. It will stay on your skin all day long. So I decided that I wanted to put it in a very small bottle like this, so it makes it light and easy to carry around. It's very portable. It means a woman can carry it in her handbag, a man can carry it in a jacket pocket, a kadora or dishdasher pocket, and also if you have a car in your glove compartment. So it means wherever you go, you can carry my ouds with you easily. So as well as the oud collection, I've worked oud in many different ways, and I'd like to explain about the other scents that I have with oud at their core. The first of them is this, Thai Air Food, which is made exclusively for Fortnum & Mason. And at the heart of this perfume is the legendary Thai Air Rose. This rose comes from a very small region of Saudi Arabia called Taif. The rose only flowers in the month of April. The flower is steam distilled using an ancient method, still collected in the way it always has been. Whatever rose we get in April is what we have to work with for the year. I used a little bit of aldehyde with it to push the rose forward and to make something which seems so classical have a very contemporary feel. Here we have Enigma Oud. With this scent, I looked at Amber Oud and Enigma and found it fascinating that both are loved all around the world. So this is my homage to East meets West. Seems to be loved by everyone because it takes you to the East and it takes you to the West just with one spray of scent. Maybe one of the most unexpected of all of my ouds is this, Sweetie Oud. The idea came to me because when I'm in the Gulf, I always find it incredible, the warmth and the hospitality, constantly being offered sweets and cakes along with naan, tea and coffee. It's a little bit like walking into a beautiful patisserie when you smell the scent of a pastry, and even if you're not hungry, you just want to eat a little. So I find it funny when people spray it on their hand and smell it, that it's almost addictive. People can't keep their hand away from under their nose. And so this is Sweetie Oud, a scent that once you've encountered it, it's impossible to escape. The Oat Lux collection is an unusual collection because it comes with the purple cap. It should tell you that it's a perfume that has something to do with me and my life journey through scent. With Majestic Oud, I wanted to capture the effect that I experienced when I walked through the Majolis or palaces of the Gulf. You can imagine in these environments you really smell the very best ouds you can, along with the Bahur. And that's exactly the effect I wanted to create in this majestic oud. H oud I made exclusively for Harrods, and I thought of that store. I thought of the idea when you walk in that you expect to find very unusual things, luxurious things, things that are not commonplace. So this oud had to have something about it which was unlike any other oud that you've smelt. So here you see the distinctive Harrods green cap, and inside I used a note of valerian. I think it may be as one of the only times it's ever been used in perfumery, along with a big note of patchouli and things like gerjam, really, really rare, exotic, unusual odors, and combine them to make a scent which is as unforgettable as walking through those doors and discovering the interior of a fabulous and fascinating store. I hope this video about Oud has helped you learn a little bit more about it, helped you understand it better, and I hope through the stories behind my creations, you see how diverse the palette can be of effects, all based around this one legendary raw material.